Hello guys, now in this video let's discuss about adrenal gland. We all know adrenal gland was divided into two parts. One is adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. Adrenal cortex is the outer part and adrenal medulla is the inner part. We have already discussed this in renal also. Now important points are adrenal cortex is derived from intermediate mesoderm. Okay, this is something related to embryology. So adrenal cortex is derived from intermediate mesoderm. But adrenal medulla is derived from neural crest cells or we can say adrenal medulla is a neural crest in origin, neural crest cell in origin. Okay, so both ad adrenal medulla and adrenal cortex they have different origin. Now let's see some important points about adrenal cortex. You all guys know adrenal cor cortex was divided into three layers from outer to inner. What are the three layers? Remember it like GFR. Okay, G F R. What are these three zones? The three zones are zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. These are the three layers in adrenal cortex. Okay. Now, zona glomerulosa, it's producing mineralocorticoids like aldosterone. Okay, aldosterone is an example of mineralocorticoid right? because it is associated with mineral metabolism. That is the sodium, uh, like you no know, sodium regulation will be under the control of aldosterone. And zona fasciculata, it's producing glucocorticoid. Example is cortisol, why? Because it is associated with the glucose metabolism. And zona reticularis is producing six corticoids, why? Because it produces male six corticoids, especially. Okay, so these are the three zones and three different types of hormones which are coming from the three zones. Now, here I just want to integrate some important points from anatomy also. Okay, anatomy. Usually in your exams, this is a very important area. They will ask you which of the following cells or which of the following organs are derived from the neural crest cells. Okay. Now, in the slides, let's have, let's see what are the derivatives of neural crest cells. I used to remember with a mnemonic. The mnemonic which I use for myself is MPSC. Just like UPSC exam, remember it like MPSC. Just like UPSC, MPSC. So, MPSC is the goal of the student. Okay, UPSC is a girl, just like that, MPSC girl. So, M for melanocytes, the melanocytes in the skin, melanin producing cells, they are derived from neural crest cells. P for parafollicular C cells. What are parafollicular C cells? These are the cells which are present in the thyroid gland and they are producing calcitonin. Calcitonin decreases the blood calcium levels. And what are these S cells? S cells are the Schwann cells. What exactly are the Schwann cells? They are the myelinating cells in the peripheral nervous system. And C cells for chromaffin cells. Chromaffin cells are the cells which are present in the ganglia. Okay, sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia and conotranchal septum. Now, goal for G for ganglia, I just have to, uh, said you, like you know, even ganglia is also derived from the neural crystals. And odontoblasts are the ones which forms the bones. And A for adrenal medulla, yes, this is the important point. We just have discussed adrenal medulla is neural crystal in origin and adrenal cortex is derived from the intermediate mesoderm and L for leptomeninges. Leptomeninges include arachnoid and pia, not the dura. Okay, arachnoid and pia matter together called as leptomeninges and they are also derived from the neural crystals. Okay, for your exam at least you need to know these are the structures which are derived from the neural crystals. After seeing this, let's talk about the first type of hormone which is coming from the adrenal gland that is the zona, that's from the zona globerulosa that is mineralocorticoid. Okay, so what is the example of mineralocorticoid, guys? The example of mineralocorticoid which we are going to discuss is aldosterone. Now, aldosterone, in the name itself, it's there. Steron means it's a steroid hormone. It's an example of steroid. Okay. Now, where it is acting? Now, this aldosterone, it's acting on the principal cells of the collecting ducts of a nephron. In the nephron, there is collecting duct, right? Now, on this collecting duct, there are two important types of cells. One is principal cell and other is the intercalated cell. Now, let's talk about the principal cell. Now, aldosterone is going to act on the principal cells. Now, as it's a steroid hormone, it can cross the cell membrane. The receptor is not present on the cell membrane. There are no cell surface receptor for aldosterone. The receptor is present in the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, this aldosterone, now this aldosterone, it will directly cross the cell membrane and it will bind to the receptor which is present in the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, whenever it binds to the its receptor in the cytoplasm, that receptor will go and activate certain genes. At the end of the day, the effects of aldosterone is absorption of sodium. Whenever there is aldosterone, sodium will be reabsorbed back. 
more aldosterone more sodium reabsorption less aldosterone less sodium reabsorption for example imagine if there is more aldosterone more sodium is getting reabsorbed, reabsorbed so more positive charges are being uptaken right more positive charges are being reabsorbed so to maintain the electron neutrality of the cell if you take one positive charge you have to throw one positive charge out so for every sodium ion which is being reabsorbed one potassium ion is being expelled out of the cell okay or effluxed out of the cell so the effects of aldosterone is sodium reabsorption potassium excretion in exchange this is one effect now if the same aldosterone if it acts on intercalated cell okay we have discussed this in the renal also there are two types of intercalated cells type a and type b but still again so aldosterone it will come it will cross the cell membrane it will come into the cytoplasm it will bind with the receptor but when it acts on intercalated cell especially type a intercalated cell now protons are being lost okay so aldosterone will cause proton excretion these are the effects of aldosterone now based on whatever we have discussed let's integrate it with pathology let's talk about a syndrome called as con syndrome now what exactly is con syndrome it's very simple con syndrome is adrenal adenoma so i'm just showing you the adrenal gland now in the adrenal gland this is the adrenal medulla now the problem is there is adrenal adenoma there is an adenoma there is a tumor functional tumor in the adrenal cortex now what this functional tumor is doing this functional tumor is releasing lots and lots of aldosterone okay so so much amount of aldosterone is getting produced from this tumor it's a functional tumor okay now whenever there is so much amount of aldosterone what will happen what are the clinical features in this patient now we have seen aldosterone increases the sodium reabsorption increases the proton and potassium excretion so now this person will have increase sodium reabsorption or this person may have hypernatremia but most of the times in 90% of the case in uh, cases the patient will have normal amount of sodium levels normal uh, serum sodium levels why we have discussed this in renal also because of something called as aldosterone escape phenomena whenever aldosterone is increasing the counter regulatory hormones like atrial natriuretic peptide will also increase so whatever the sodium being reabsorbed that sodium will again be lost because of the atrial natriuretic peptide okay so sodium increases or most of the times it will be normal also this aldosterone will cause hypokalemia in con syndrome excessive amount of aldosterone will cause excessive loss of potassium so that will cause hypokalemia and excessive loss of protons will cause alkalosis protons are being lost right so that's the alkalosis now how to treat this condition the problem is because of this adenoma so surgical resection is the option but not all the patient can afford that so we have to block the receptors of the aldosterone let the aldosterone be there but block the receptors of aldosterone so the drugs which we can use is aldosterone antagonists okay so what is the example of aldosterone antagonist this is spironolactone so spironolactone is the aldosterone antagonist which can be used in treatment of con syndrome and the most important side effect of spironolactone is gynecomastia which was asked many times in the exam so we have discussed the important points about the adrenal gland and also we have seen important points about the mineralocorticoid that is aldosterone now in the next video we will discuss in detail about cortisol its functions and a pathocorrelation that is the cushing's syndrome hope the video is helpful thank you